We're revisiting an old topic. A few years ago, we posted an article entitled, How many watts does a gaming PC really need? Which focused on testing multiple configurations for power consumption. We started working on a revisit to this last week using the new Cooler Master Masterwatt Bronze 450 watt PSU as a baseline, seeing as recently, and in general, we've advocated for more 400 to 450 watt power supplies and builds. This content piece shows how far we can get on the lower wattage power supplies with modern hardware. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by the EVGA 1080 Ti SC2 and NVIDIA Destiny 2 bundle running up through September 4th. The 1080 Ti SC2 comes with asynchronous fan control for its dual fans, nine thermal sensors, and again includes Destiny 2. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is kind of an old topic. We've looked at it probably a couple times over the years because as hardware iterates, it tends to get more power efficient, generally speaking. So it's always worth going back to. And there was a period where 1000 plus watt power supplies were pretty common for gaming systems uh, outside of the mining craze where it actually kind of makes sense. But now with where modern hardware is, 400, 450 watts will really get you quite far. For something like a 1080, 1070, stuff like that, most people we see online pick stuff that's 600, 800 watts, somewhere in that range. Even that's a little overkill. 600 is okay, but once you start getting 700 plus, it's it's not needed for really a lot of the hardware that's out there. Right? You could do an i7 or an R7 or an R5 build with a 1080 or a 1080 Ti and get away just fine at 600 watts and even lower if you really wanted to, which we'll show today. So we're using the Cooler Master Master Watt PSU, which we're just using because it's brand new and it's 450 watts. And it's supposed to be, I think, $50, which is where we want to see them. And with the lower wattage power supplies, hopefully becoming more prevalent, it's, there's going to be more questions online of, wait, can I actually use 450 watts and get away with a PC? So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, a couple of reasons you would want a high-end PSU which is different from just a high wattage power supply. They're not, they're not the same thing, obviously. So high-end power supplies uh, will get you things like better voltage ripple, which has potentially a significant impact on clock stability. If you have a power supply with a whole lot of voltage ripple because it's garbage, then you're gonna end up with problems with the clock dropping. Like if you have say 80 to 100 millivolts of voltage ripple versus 10, that'll be noticeable, especially with overclocking. Other reasons for high-end power supplies are all the different protections over current, uh, over power, over voltage, stuff like that, are built into the thing to try and prevent either you or an external force from inadvertently destroying the power supply or the co components that hide behind it. So a lot of reasons for a high-end unit, but a high-end unit doesn't have to be high wattage. It can be a lower wattage unit too. So uh, that's what we're looking at today. The point of this is mostly to illustrate how overkill people go because really you don't need 800 plus watts for a lot of the stuff that's out there. Let's start with idle power consumption. This is expectedly low across the board and not really that exciting. You're well below 100 watts in pretty much all scenarios. So we can move on from this one quickly and just go straight into gaming. Let's look at GTA 5. We tested games in 1080p and 1440p and are only showing average draw for these applications. Not the peak draw, but the average during the gaming scenario. With the MSI GTX 1060 used, which is the lowest power consumer of the GPUs we have on this chart, and with the 1600X combined with it, we rest at just under 200 watts on average for GTA 5. EVGA's 1070 SC and 1600X combo comes up next, running a power consumption of 220 to 240 watts with peak consumption at 246. This puts us around or a little over 50% of the power supply's total continuous capabilities, meaning we're roughly at the peak of the efficiency curve for the 230 volt outlets in Europe and elsewhere in the world for the master watt bronze 450 watt unit. For the US outlets at 115 volts, peak efficiency is closer to the 45% area. Pushing beyond that 50% marker, the 1080 FTW and 1600X configuration consumes about 230 to 270 watts and the 1080 plus 7700K stock config draws 270 to 282. The latter positions us at around 63% utilization, which is really plenty acceptable. Switching to an RX 580 moves us up between the 280 and 300 watt range for both configurations, 
around where the 4.9 gigahertz overclock 7700K and 1080 land. At 300 watts draw, we're using 67% of the power supply's available continuous supply. And at 230 volts, we're still plenty efficient at this point, just above 85% with 115 volt efficiency dropping to around 85% or just below. At this point, efficiency is less of a concern than noise might be. Most power supplies will begin ramping fan curve at this mark so noise levels rise. That increase may not be noticeable over the rest of the system's noise under similar load, granted, but it's something worth pointing out. And just a quick side note here, the efficiency curve chart and noise curve chart that we have are from Cooler Master's marketing materials, so... We're working with their scales here. Total War is next and it gives us another look at different types of gaming performance where CPU load is higher with performance ranging from 206 watts consumption to 336 watts average power consumption at the wall across all the configurations. At 336 watts, we're breaching 74% utilization out of the 450 available, which increases us along the fan curve axis significantly, now at around seven to eight dBA higher than the 60% mark. And we validated this with our own dB meter. If that's not a concern, the power supply can still handle it, especially considering that most gamers aren't putting their systems under constant high utilization scenarios nonstop. If this is sustained for gaming, it's still fine. It's just not ideal. We're also losing headroom here for the spikier load levels, which peaked at 354 watts for the 1080 and 7700K OC system, and losing room for additional components or GPU overclocking. Realistically, you really shouldn't pair a 450 watt power supply with a GTX 1080 and overclock 7700K anyway, because if you're spending that kind of money on those components, you probably have enough money to buy a higher wattage power supply. And although you don't need one, it's worth getting with those high-end components just to have the overhead for GPU overclocking. If that's not of interest, then you've got some room, but still, at some point you draw the line, and when you're spending that much money, it is worth considering a slightly higher wattage power supply just to give yourself room because you can move these power supplies from one system to the next as you iterate and build. But either way, that doesn't mean you couldn't use the lower wattage ones like the 450 watt unit we have here. Here's Rocket League, where we see lower power consumption due to the lighter weight workload. At the very high end, we're drawing 284 watts, give or take, keeping us reasonably close to peak efficiency on the curve and lower noise levels. This game's not that stressful, though. Speaking of not that stressful in terms of power consumption, we can look at the production and synthetic workloads that are more CPU-driven, we're clearly well below the 50% mark here as the GPU remains unutilized and other resources don't engage as heavily. We're well under 200 watts in most of these tests. So clearly for a lot of gaming builds, you'd be fine with 450 watts. You'd be fine with 400 watts if you could find one. The problem is towards the lower wattage end of the scale, there's a whole lot more garbage components, a lot, a lot more cheap stuff that uh, maybe 80 plus white if you're lucky for efficiency ratings, but otherwise kind of gets untrustworthy in that area. So it's harder to find power supplies in the 400 watt range that are actually good value for the money without also getting into the dangerous uh, component assembly area. But 450 watts is starting to fill out now. Cooler Master's got this. Silverstone's been pushing for 400, 450 watts for a while now, and they have good product in that category. Uh, EVGA is starting to work on it. Corsair starting to get more of those out there. So it's becoming more popular, 450 especially. And clearly it's enough power for a lot of configurations. The ones we built here aren't meant to be like the best PC you could build. It's just meant to be, here's a look at a couple of popular components thrown together and what kind of power they consume. Arguments for a higher wattage you could go with would be, well, maybe you want to transplant the power supply into future systems and maybe you're, tra you're trying to do more with it or uh, planning to do something like multi-GPU or memory or CPU overclocking, GPU overclocking, things like that. There's argument there for higher wattage power supplies. But for a lot of builds, really you can get away with this or with stuff even in the 400 watt range, especially when you're looking at the lower end GPUs that are lower power consumption. So that's all we wanted to point out is that you really don't need these 800 watt power supplies everyone wants to use. Now with Vega 56 and 64, when you start doing stuff like we're doing and stay tuned for this content and pushing the power target by 100 plus percent, then you probably want it. We were drawing 100 plus, it might've been 150 watts more in some cases than stock. So there are reasons to go with higher wattage, but most people don't ever get into that territory. 
So that's all for this one. As always, you can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus, gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. And a side note, we'll be at PAX West this weekend, I suppose. So if you see us there, give us a shout. Otherwise, stay tuned for the coverage, subscribe for all that, and we'll see you all next time.